This is one of my favorite children's stories. And when I was a kid, this was the coolest thing ever. Harold and the Purple Crayon is a story about a boy who finds himself in a totally blank universe, only equipped with one purple crayon, and decides to draw his own world and starts to interact with his own imagination. It very well might have been the inspiration for me to become an artist myself. And I've always had this crazy idea in my head to create my own animated version with a spray can and a huge wall. Well, today's the day. Let's see if I can turn this idea into a reality. First, I'm gonna storyboard out the main components of the story and the animation I wanna make. I'm taking inspo directly from this page specifically. The main idea is that I paint a throwy and it turns into a giant T-Rex that tries to eat me. I originally thought about doing this animation directly on the wall like my previous street art animations. But this one's a lot bigger and more intense and I'm gonna animate digitally instead to, you know, save myself a trip to the loony bin. Okay, here's my wall right here. I'm gonna be doing my animation on. I got all my cameras set up right here. Perfect time, it's cloudy. There's no shadows on the wall or anything. So we're good to go. Let's let it rip. Got my purple spray can to customize this. My Harold crayon right here. Okay, this is purple crayon, take one. Oh shit. Okay, that was take one. I wanna check it out. Oh. oh, this is so cool. I think this is gonna work out. I might have got it on the first take, but I'll do a couple more. All right, this is take two. Take three. I think that's the one, baby. Ha -ha. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, that's it for day one, but I'm excited to see what we got and I'm ready to start animating, so let's do it. I brought in all my footage to edit into a clean plate and combined all the best takes into one final cut to animate on top of. All right, so we're gonna dive into Procreate Dreams for the first time here. Very exciting. This is gonna be a real test of my of my might and my willpower. So we got our color corrected footage here. We're just gonna drag and drop. Okay, there we go. Look at that, ready to animate. I was doing this invisibly on the wall. So hopefully it'll look okay when I trace my own invisibility sketch here. And I'm not like a super pro with doing throw ups. So uh, all you graph heads, give me a little break. I have to uh, kind of sketch it out first and then do another pass with a pen over it. And then basically do a mask and work backwards and like reveal the line. So it looks like it's being sprayed. Okay, I got my throw up here. I wish the E was a little bigger, but uh, I'm gonna just have to live with it. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a new track up here and I'm going to cover up everything here. I'm gonna make this group mask. I'm gonna do a layer mask, invert that mask. So boom, now it disappears. And then when I come into flip book here, I can take my eraser. Things start to slowly come into frame. Okay, it's time to grind it out. Let's go. For proof of concept, I, I finished the throwy, and I mean, it looks sweet. This, this is pretty rad. It's pretty much how I pictured it coming out. Now I just gotta like mask off myself here when I'm over the, the lines here. When I would try and do this second layer mask, things started to fall apart on me. It keeps crashing on me. Oh my God. I've like barely begun. I can't even, oh my God. After this super frustrating experience, I had to come up with a different solution. I think I'm gonna try and do a workaround here. I'm gonna save this as its own video and then import it back in and then mask it off. We'll see how that works. Once I finagled that workaround, things actually started to fall into place. Okay, so about an hour later, I have masked myself out. Decently convincing. Pretty, pretty sweet. Okay. That's the easy part. <laughs> now I have to turn this into a freaking T-Rex. Okay. And before I start drawing, I need some reference materials. So, off to my favorite aisle. Oh, so good. Research, business expense. 
Okay. This is cool. That's good animating. And with big projects like this, the first thing I love to do is to just get organized. And so I'm using Milanote. Milanote, who's a sponsor of this video, is a handy digital tool designed to help you organize all your creative projects. As you can see here, I've gathered a whole mood board for all my inspirations and plans for this animation here. And I can create extra boards for specific things like a whole folder of T-Rex references, which I'm gonna need a lot of. And instead of sifting through folders and images on my computer, I can just have them all laid out here all at once. I've also plugged in my storyboard and a note for each drawing so I can remind myself what's happening in each scene while I'm deep into animating. So now I can quickly scan where I'm at and move forward without missing a beat. And if I'm missing something, I can easily drag and drop images or text or columns or draw arrows. Everything's built right in and it's very, very intuitive. And Milanote has been so handy, I plan on using it for a potential graphic novel that I wanna create here and use it for my page layouts and the scripts and all the files and the inspirations all into one place. And it comes with hundreds of built-in templates for illustrators, photographers, filmmakers, any creator really. Milanote is available for free right now via the desktop or the app no time limit. So sign up using the link in my description and start organizing your thoughts into your next creative project. And thanks to Milano for sponsoring this video. Let's dive into this T-Rex. All right, I've drawn a few keyframes in here. You can sort of see what it's gonna look like. Boom, boom, boom. I just gotta animate in between these keyframes and make them come to life. This was the first part of real actual animation and I just had to dive in head first. All right, here's all the drawings I have so far. And I noticed that it's best if the tail starts to wiggle a little bit before the whole transformation, to show like a little tease, like he's breaking out of his, his shell basically. And then boom, it transforms. And also the timing with everything, because I'm still walking away like this, and then the tail starts to wiggle and I look back and then it transforms. Now I just got to get him up on his feet. I'm no animation aficionado or anything, so I'm really just winging it and trying to figure this all out as I go. Okay, I'm making some pretty good progress here. I'm trying to get the T-Rex up onto the surface here and he's got one foot already. I'm just trying to get the other foot and I'm trying to get the weight and the momentum uh, so it feels like believable and he feels weighty. Comes down to get momentum and he hoists himself back up and flicks his second foot up like that and then lands really hard. So we're, we're getting there, gotta keep going. Okay, we're getting to that point where I gotta do a whole 180. I have this red line to follow his head all the way over there. And this is the point where it goes from 2D to 3D. That's where this toy really comes in handy here, so I can get the dimensional aspects of his head. This is um, definitely one of the more complicated animations I gotta do. Ready for the challenge. A lot to think about, but just filling out the, these masses in space with this foreshortening and creating that depth and that turnaround. It's, it's a bit challenging, but it's really fun. Okay, we are at day four. The first three days were very uh, productive, I would say. And I noticed that, you know, each frame that I add, it keeps you motivated to keep going one frame at a time, this whole story that evolves uh, right before your eyes. So, let's keep drawing. After I stared at this for many hours, I noticed that something was just off about this T-Rex taking a step. So I went and did some proper research to find out the issue. So after getting some very scientific reference, I noticed that my up and down motion was totally off. So you see how the leg comes up and his whole body kind of comes down with it? That's backwards. So what I had to do, redraw everything so he would be coming up with his leg and then back down. It feels a lot more natural, like he's really coming for me. So that was a big change I had to fix, but now we're back on track. Now it was time to start adding some more action for me and my purple spray can. I figured out that I could manipulate the drawings and warp them into place for certain shots, creating a really cool effect that looks like I'm interacting directly with the drawings on the wall. And then once I let it go, I'll come back in with the frame by frame to give it that energy that it needs. To keep the T-Rex looking alive, 
I would make sure to draw the tail wiggling around back there to emphasize his presence on the wall. So a few more changes I'm adding as I'm going here. I wanted to make him a little more menacing. He seemed a little too, uh, a little too friendly and I wanted him to be more and more intimidating. So I added these juicy spit and slime coming out of his mouth as he opens it up. And then I'm going to go back and change his uh, legs to be more angular. See how this is like roundy polioli here? This angular makes it a lot more intimidating and a lot more fierce. Got to go back and, and redo all those frames. But I'm learning all these things as I go. That's how it goes. The days were ticking away as I meticulously drew each frame one after the other. And after the catapult fails, Kipto tries something a little beefier. But the T-Rex doesn't budge. I wanted to up the ante with this T-Rex here and give him like an upgrade. A transformation into an even more intimidating force of nature. Okay, we got our Pokemon upgrade here. And this is the part where I draw a circle around myself as like a force field. Boom. And he comes and smashes down on it like that. So I got to get from here to here. And I want him to take a step with his right foot. So he's going to go back up. Land his foot here and slam down on this. It's kind of cool when I split up the body parts in the layers like this because it's kind of like half keyframing, half frame by frame. Because so I can just keyframe the mouth and the head and the jaws to kind of move over and open up. And then I just have to draw the legs frame by frame to fill in the rest. Just trying to make things go a little faster and smoother. After spending almost two weeks on the animation, I needed a change of scenery, which is easy with the iPad, thankfully. But the process itself was definitely starting to take its toll on me. You gotta stay hyper-focused during animation and believe in the results before they happen. But once you got a section finished, it was so satisfying to watch it come to life. And my respect for animators and the work that goes into it definitely skyrocketed. You're not just drawing but creating movement and weight and emotion and truly bringing something to life. It's a great exercise in patience and resilience. Just keep going, one at a time. One more frame, one more day, one more. I am the biggest critic of my own work, of my rate of output, and of my rate of progress. This animation sort of speaks to my own insecurities, my own harsh beliefs targeting my weakest parts of myself, manifested as a giant T-Rex. My own creations can turn into the biggest threats to myself. This book reminds me of my childhood, when the possibilities were endless and my imagination was busy unraveling the intricate world around me. A reminder to dream to look past the realm of reality and into the unknown, to make believe and create a world from scratch and be brave enough to live in it, to thrive in it and share it with others who can be inspired just like I was. Even when you feel the massive weight of this complicated existence, the pressures of adulthood, the unfulfilled goals still poking at your inner critic, even then, all it takes is one purple crayon and the will to keep going. As the marks we make silently shout that there is possibility in this world to make it your own. We did it. We freaking did it. After years of this rattling around in my head, it only took a few weeks to bring it to fruition. I think that's a pretty good trade-off. So if you got that idea rolling around in your head that you want to come to life, just start. And then you'll have a thing that you made that you can be proud of. So without further ado, here's the final animation come to life.
that was juicy. That was fun and hard and difficult and long, but uh, pretty stoked on the results, man. It was really cool. And, and I, I kind of feel like that, that ending there, it's like Jumanji, where he kind of gets trapped into this purple spray can world to so like some other dimension. The next person who picks it up, uh, when they spray it, he'll like escape and then it'll keep going. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. If you really enjoy my work, I have some brand spanking new prints in the shop. Worked really hard to create some awesome new stuff for you guys, all based on paintings and murals that are painted all around the world. So if that sparks your fancy, make sure to check it out along with sticker packs and t-shirts and all sorts of cool stuff over at Kipto.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.